Good day, guys. Uh, okay, we've got Ramwick today, rather than the three metres. Just check that it's still a five. I'm pretty sure it is soft five. Uh, driest track we've come across, and from reports, um, the track gallop sort of yesterday, looks like it should be pretty dry. So, uh, setting up pretty for a pretty even track. Uh, ideally, you'll probably want to get three or four off in the straight if it is uh, a little bit soft still, but if it's not, that, that inside section might be okay. I still doubt they'll stay hard fence. They rarely do at Ramwick, but it um, be interesting to see how it plays a drying surface, considering all the traffic and everything uh, the tracks had. Sort of got to take into account too that no one's really been near that inside for a long time because of the way the tracks have been playing and they've been pushing the rails out. So it's a, it's a little bit interesting to see how this track plays, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, um, you know, okay to be up on speed there today and, and closer to the inside. So keeping an eye on things, I'm just going to knock the first five races out again, hopefully get them all out before the first today. I uh, just want to make sure these first five are um, out as early as possible. So starting with race one, uh, what have I done here? I've just got this a bit wide, but that's all right. Just move that in right away. Uh, shouldn't matter. You can go away. Okay, race one. Uh, the highway race uh, today. I, I've come up with Boot Scooter, just a horse that looks rock solid, going extra well, up and really on the up. Um, dominant winner from the wrong spot in a, in a, a pretty solid maiden at uh, Scone. Second horse has come out and run well there. This horse has then gone up in grade to Newcastle, just to a class one. Really slowly run race um, over this trip and hit the line quite nicely there with not a lot of pressure on a softish track. I think this horse will be better on top of the ground. Really hope it holds a spot just behind the leaders. Uh, no weight on its back, 53 and a half. Um, and, you know, main danger has got to give it weight and a start, I would imagine. So it looks very hard to beat um, if, if it just finds that nice position early. The ride is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, Reese Jones can put in a bad one, but from a, a soft draw with a, this sort of horse, I think, um, it, it, you know, it should all play out okay. Touch wood, touch wood. Um, Zadig will be up on speed, uh, informed jockey Dylan Givens, and it should run well. Uh, the setup's good, and I think the drying track certainly plays into its hands. Bit of a one-paced horse, so a horse like Boots Gooder should be able to pick it off if uh, all things are equal. Um, late in the race, uh, it's it's probably got the superior turn of speed, Boots Gooder, and um, it should be hard to beat there. Uh, Tags is, is short in the betting. Not really sure why it's so short with the rider, and I'm not sure where it's going to get to. Should probably be midfield and have to give horse like Boot Scooter a start. And Stepley, who was back to all the, close to its best form there last start, obviously the, the, the firmer surface there was to its liking. Where does it get to here? Probably last. Uh, 59 and last makes it very difficult, but if they do overdo it up front, somehow it, it should run well. Angelical can improve, but does need to. Um, bit of a query runner. Uh, today, but I think it's, it's probably short enough. Thought that um, you know Hocker he was probably the the value runner from inside draw that should you know lead or sit third the fence and uh, has a good setup. I think the drying track helps it as well too. Very fit horse Hocker Hay back in distance. Uh, yeah, so it's it's boots good for me here. I think it looks very hard to beat and uh, a few dangers, but um, probably Zadig and Hocker Hay up on speed are the ones that it's going to have to get past. The rest are having to have to come past boot scooter, which I think won't be an easy uh, thing to do. So um, yeah, if found this this combination a little bit lately, uh, Reese Jones and all them in these highways and not a lot of luck. But that that the horse that in question normally gets sort of back and wide, whereas this one's got a bit more tactical speed, a nice draw, and and a good setup. So um, should be hard to beat in the first boot scooter race two. Another race that I kind of like here. There's, there's two main chances. The, the way I, I um, looking at it now I just the maps that the, the key to this race if Yankees can lead or sit outside leader and midnight Tokyo can slot in straight behind it it doesn't jump that well but um, you know sometimes horses after a couple of starts can learn to jump and it doesn't it does have a bit of speed after it hits the ground so if it jumps on terms with them at all like even a half length behind Yankees and can somehow hold its back I think it's the, the one to hold out and Yankees is the one to run down and I think that's a it makes it a very good um, betting race potentially I think midnight in Tokyo is around six dollars I the thing I'm, I'm trying to work out is how, like it's coming back from 
uh, group three grade where it's it's run very well over 1200 meters slowly run race there so i'm not too worried about back to 1100 for it um but very strong it's first start in a race set outside the lead in a, in a thousand and it was just strong there just sort of was just too good for them um it beat home she's a belts from robusto today which are a shorter price like short price horses in a ones in a group one obviously come out and proven that form a little bit um in, uh, it was off that day it was on the inside there she's a belter came out and ran really well after that and now starts like five dollars in a group one today this horse is going to an open two-year-old and it's six dollars against horses that are coming out of maidens at goulburn and hawkesbury so it just seems the price has to be wrong i know they're probably unfashionable the rider and and the trainer a little bit midnight in tokyo but um just has to be has to run well here and if it jumps, it's going to be mighty hard to beat. I do love Yankees as a horse and think 1,100 metres around here, drying surface and, and where it'll be in the run are all uh, in its favour. And I think it's a very good horse. You just, but you've got to take into account that it has to probably come up to midnight in Tokyo's level if um, if things go its way, as in midnight in Tokyo, if it has its chance. I, I really think those two are the ones to beat. I thought Emilia Romagna is... A, is nearly certain to be crossed from that inside draw, which makes it very difficult for her and thought she was given a very good ride. Ran good time at Goulburn last start, but found the fast lane and I'm concerned about its price today. I think it's short, can win, but short. Uh, and then we've got a horse like Gilmore who's trialled up okay for Snowden, always scary. And I thought the absolute knockout runner, even though it's probably gonna be last in the run, is what's going on. Um, just liked its trials, think it's got something there. Sizzling, I'm not a big breeding person, but uh, not many of them have, have uh, even when they trial up well, they just don't seem to bring it to the races, the sizzling. So that's a little bit of a query, but you know, it, it could be 40 or 50 to one here, what's going on, and I've got to have something tiny on it. But uh, settling on Yankees to beat um, Midnight in Tokyo, but not a lot between them here. And, um, and I'm very wor weary, wary of Midnight in Tokyo. Uh, early in bettings, the Yankees was like seven dollars, and it was it was you know if it, if it knew it was going to get track conditions and scratchings and everything to go this way, it was probably a, a solid play. Like if you were getting seven dollars and six dollars midnight in Tokyo, I'd be backing them both. As it is, we're getting sort of four dollars something. Yankees thinks that sh think that short enough, probably about its right price, and midnight in Tokyo is sort of five to six dollars, and I, I think that's probably. Um, about right too. So it's a bit of a nightmare. I've probably talked too much about a race uh, that the betting is not going to allow us to play too heavily into, but I think they're nice horses and I, I just got wrapped up in the race. Uh, race three, Queen Bellissimo just fully controls the speed here and, and that's probably the key to the race. Uh, very smart claim, uh, rider upgrade for mine. Just has to go a little bit quicker than she did last start to make sure she's not out sprinted at the tail end here by anything if she just sort of uh, runs along and and makes it a bit of a test i think she'll be very hard to beat here peaks fitness wise as i said sort of should get full control and the main dangers look like they'll give a start uh where where rainbow connection and why ha ha falls get to in the run are probably the keys to me betting here uh, or the race for me and whether le vizier gets crossed by lady shenanigans and ends up three back the rail i think they're the dangerous runners uh, Tamerlane's obviously dangerous, but uh, very short. Three dollars ninety seems short for it. A horse that's pretty one paced. If it lobs one out, one back, it's dangerous. You know, if, if the map goes to how it looks here and Lady Shenagans crosses and, and Tamerlane gets in front of a, a few, yeah, it's dangerous. But it's not a horse that I can sort of find with confidence. Rainbow Connection can run a race if it gets outside the leader. Thought it went okay first up. Strips much fitter, and I thought why he ha ha falls was the value around the ten dollar mark. Um, with the blinkers on first time, first up. So it had blinkers on last prep, first up last time, and it didn't have blinkers, that's what I'm saying. Horse normally races well fresh, trialed really well, and think it looks like it's going well. And I don't think it's even impossible that it could race a little bit more forward. So the answer's a pineapple for me here, but I think Waha Ha Falls is, um, is possibly the value uh, at odds. Uh, Queen Blissimo, the one to beat. Race four, another decent enough race, but um, no value in the betting. Very similar to race two, unfortunately. I think Moon Reader will run really well. Should just cross those horses inside or sit one off, and, and then you should have sort of Prince Aurelius, Don Luigi, Boudoir push forward, even if S1 push forward. Don't think that's an issue. Moon Reader should get a nice run here. Uh, Krill Summer's going really well. 
probably wants to stay off the fence, but um, if it ends up three back the rails or something, might be a bit dicey, but the horse is going extra well, the stable's still flying, and it should run well, but again, both of those are priced up to, to match. I thought the horse here, which is a complete knockout horse, is what could be. Bit of a sneaky setup with two 900 meter runs on heavy tracks given little to no chance in both of those races and now jumps straight to 1200 on a drier surface can see it improving significantly at monster odds and the only reason i'm keen to have an absolute peanut on it is because it is big odds and it's a race where i can't find much other value i can see many different outcomes here potentially i don't think it's a uh, a closed off race with only a few chances. I do think Cruel Summer and Moon Reader set up really well, very informed, stables informed, and find good positions, which you know tick a lot of boxes. So I think they'll both run well, but they're very short, um, or they're short enough. And what could be you just if they go crazy and it's out the back and it runs on it at uh, you know at big odds, I just don't want to let it win without me. So that's race four and race five. This is the hardest race of the day. Just uh, like a, a pure, I don't even want to spend much time on it. To be honest, I think Niffler is a, is a risk on the backup, but going well, so I don't want to take it on too much. Nothing sweet about me is very similar. They're just so similar, a lot of these horses. All of them have got enough speed to sort of put themselves into a race. All of them can finish off okay. Not too many of them are, are risks at the mile. Um, if anything, this horse is probably looking for further, so they'll be strong. Um, one pace but strong I thought Ruby Tuesday was just literally worth an absolute interest if you want to play very similar to what could be probably want to have a little bit more on what could be because I think it's probably warrants it but if Ruby Tuesday led jumped and led from the outside draw back on a drier surface it can run well here at big odds but um, like I said like a lot of well set up horses stalking it so um, don't want to be too uh, crazy on, on betting up on or anything like that. I thought maybe Ida was the one to beat as well with a smart claim with a little bit more positive ride potentially here, try and cross those horses inside and, and it can run well. But like I said, there's, there's not much between these and I don't think there's not anything too exciting in the betting either. So that's the first five, a, a few decent races, nothing lines up too much, but certainly uh, Boot Scooter can run well in race one. Um, Yankees in Midnight in Tokyo can run well in race two. Uh, Why Ha Ha Falls needs a bit of luck in race three. But I thought it, it trialling up quite nicely and looked the value. Queen Bellissimo, the one to beat. Race four, not a lot of value. We're just cheering for what could be to come from last, a bit like Rifles did on Wednesday. Just an interest bet uh, for a horse that's got a bit of a, a different setup and may have been missed, has, has got ability when it feels like it, even though it's getting on in age. All right, I'll come back as soon as I can with the rest. Thanks, guys.